Hi, Stacy. Hi, Joan. Hi, Kathy. Hope you guys can hear me. We still have a few minutes before we start. Just getting some things set up here. Hey, Alice. Hey, Jamie. We got a lot to cover tonight. Woo. Hi, Ann. While we're waiting for other people to join, I may go ahead and get the little things out of the way. It's been a day. It's like everything just kind of fell apart when I went to sleep this morning at 9 a.m. <laughs> hey, Joan. Hey, Gerald. Hi, okay. Hey, Claudia. Hey, Jessica. Hi, Alice. Um, when you put in design space that you want to cut two items, how does that work? Um, hey, Karen. Uh, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Hi, Sue. Um, well, if you've got two items in there, when you hit make it, they're both going to go to the screen. If you have them different colors on your canvas, then they will um, automatically go to two different mats. If you have them cutting out of the same material, same color, then they will both be on the same mat if they will fit. Hi, Hetty. Hi, Pat. Hi, Debbie. If you can give me a little bit more detail, Alice, then I can um, clarify that for you. I just want to go over, I did a video, a short little tutorial on how to use this vinyl calculator because several people are asking how to price their uh, crafts. Um, and I can't really give you uh, legally business advice because that's not what I do. Um, but I can help you with a little bit of a tool that will help. Hi Julie. I will show you that Julie we're going to go over some escal tonight too. Hi Kathy. Hi Barb. Multiples of a layout. Okay I got you. Thank you Ann. Um, I'll show you that in just a second here. Let me go cover this really quick and get it out of the way. Um, this is a vinyl calculator guys and you, but you can use it for your other crafts as well. 
The way that this is set up is for your vinyl, and you can put in here your white vinyl that you got from Cricut, and it may be a 12 by 48 roll that cost. I don't know, $4.50. It may have been on sale. You may have used group coupons, things like that. You're going to put that cost in there for your whole roll, and then you're going to put in how big that roll was. It was a 12 by 48 roll. And once you've got that information in there and you've cut your project, if you used a 6 by 4 piece of that, you want to put in that you used a 6 by 4 piece because you're not going to charge your customer for the whole roll. And then it will calculate over here what that cost you. Now, if you're putting that vinyl on a cup that you got from Dollar Tree, you're just going to plug in a dollar right here for your item cost. Don't change anything here. And just hit enter, and it's going to calculate that for you. If it was a project, <clears throat> excuse me, say a card where you use cardstock and paper or embellishments, then you're going you can use this to do that you can put in your embellishment <coughs> excuse me got a tickle in my throat you can put in your embellishment here and let's say that they were $3.99 for the bows say it was a bow and there were six on a card and you used one okay instead of length you can put that there are six on that card okay and just change that to a one that tells it that there is six of them because it's multiplying six times one and that will make it tell that will tell the program that there is six then over here you're going to do one and one because that's multiplying those two columns and it's telling it that you used one of those six and then it will calculate when you hit enter over here that that caught that embellishment that bow cost you 67 cents so then you can look down here and get a total so if you've got a t-shirt or whatever and you've put extra stuff on it you can use it just remember that your length and width here multiply so you'll just if there's six pieces you'll want to put six pieces here and just change this to a one to tell it that there's only six and then if you use two of them you're just going to put two here times one and it's going to tell you how much those cost. So you can use this for other things other than just vinyl. You just have to know how it works. And there are hidden columns because you don't want to change those columns and you don't want to change anything here. Just remember that it takes this, it multiplies these two columns, and it divides that number into here. To give you a cost per inch or per piece and then here when you tell it how much you used it multiplies that per that inch and then brings it in so and if anybody gets stuck and you need help to price a project let me know and I will help you um, I'm pretty good with Excel I'm still learning numbers sometimes I get stuck but it's basically a little bit easier I'm finding out um, because I can come over here and I can help you set this up too. I can save this and give it to you. You can put your project name in here and then click this right here. And when you click in there, you can notice I've got data. Then I went back to this sheet and clicked this cell and brought it over. I'm going to undo that because I don't need it in there twice. Um, but it will calculate that easily. So it's going to bring the total from that other page over here for the Smith job. And then I'm going to put my time in there. If it took me an hour and a half to do that project, there's my time. Then your pay. You have to decide what you want to get paid. So you're going to just put in here equals um, Smith or this cell here. You're going to click A because numbers does it there. Um, let me just take see if it'll let me take that out it won't anyway you're going to put this cell which is a2 in there if you're on Excel or you're just going to click it if you're in numbers 
and then whatever you want to get paid per hour. If you're working to make minimum wage and your minimum wage is $11 an hour, you're going to put in times 11.00 and then hit the check mark. And now it's going to say, okay, my pay, because it took an hour and a half, I'm getting $16.50 and I need to charge them for all of my materials, my time, what I want to be paid, that job cost me $19, they're going to pay me $19.01. My total cost for the job is over here, which was $2.52. So did that kind of make sense for everybody to kind of lighten it up and, and show you how to do that? It's really simply basic math. Um, it may be a little bit more difficult. I don't know if they've upgraded Excel. It's been a while since I used Excel. I haven't used it since, well, the last one version I had was 2010, I believe. No, might have been, yeah, I think it was 2010. So you can use your Excel spreadsheets to help you price. And then we also, in the groups, have that wiki link that tell you everything that you need to include from tax and all that, all the legal stuff. Um, but this is a tool that will help you figure the cost for your job and what you should charge bare bones minimum not to lose any money. That way you get paid for your time and your product. So I just wanted to clarify that because I had a lot of questions on that this week. And if anybody gets stuck and you need help, message me and I will help you with this. And if you want this updated version that has the project pricing in there, let me know what you want to get paid for an hour, and I'll go ahead and set it up for you and send it to you on Messenger. Because everybody's going to want to be paid differently. So it will matter. But that's how you can change it if you get one. All right, so let's close that out. I'm just going to save that. I don't need to. And this is the way that Excel one opens up, and all you're going to do is select these two columns and hide them. You're going to hide anything in red here, and you're not going to change anything here, same as the numbers on a Mac. Thanks, Kathy. Good, 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 good to know. Um, so... Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Jessica. Anybody that slipped in on me there? Patricia, Kathy, Stacy. Um, so, guys, Kathy is saying, you know, if you have questions, you know, you can reach out to her, too. And she, she's good with Excel. She can help you. She can help you figure it. Because I don't have Excel on my Mac, so I can't look on there and see what you need to do. I know what needs to be done if I see it. But I can't tell you the steps if I don't see it because I don't know what they've updated and what they haven't. And then we have, I'm going to save that right now. We have tonight's project. I'm going to go over to the project camera. Tonight's project is simple, easy, and fun. So we're going to do that. I'm going to switch to the project camera. We'll do that, and I'll come back, and I'll answer those questions on Excel and Design Space. Um, what um, Alice was asking for design space is if you want to make more than one, when you hit make it, Alice, you just hit the make it button and then you can come up here to this top left and you change the number that you want to cut. So if I wanted to cut four of these, I'm just going to change that number to four and hit apply. And it's going to do it and put it on the number of screens and pieces of paper that it takes to do this. Yeah, and anybody that needs that tool, it is in all the groups in the files. So no matter which group you're a member of, you have access to it. You have access to it if you're on a Mac in Numbers. You have access to it if you're on Windows and Excel. Is that what you were asking me, Alice? How do you change the number of things you want to do? Or if you can give me a link uh, when you did it today. It may have just been some lag in your internet. Just give it a minute. Sometimes, especially if it's really intricate, Alice, it could take a few minutes for it to process it. As you saw, all the writing that I had up here took longer to process than this down here did. You can change the paper size on each mat. 
Um, if you click on a mat, you can come in here and you can select what is available and change it. And usually if they're all the same color, I think, I don't know if they fixed that. Let's see. I'm going to say 8.5 by 11. It changes them all. So if you need to go back and change one to a 12 by 12, yeah, it changes them all. They haven't fixed that yet. I don't know if they're going to. They may want it that way, which is handy because if that's your color that you're using in your material, you're cutting from that material, then they're assuming that all of your material is that size. But, but this is where you do that and mirror and everything else. Once you hit continue, I don't think you can come back and change that. Let's see. Hey, Wanda. I'm just going to pick something that doesn't really matter. Uh, so, edit. No, I can't change the paper size after hitting that. So you have to do it there before you hit continue. I didn't think you could. I've been having one of those days where I just can't remember anything because everything has blown up today. <laughs> it's just been one of those days. Hi, Sandra. Okay. And I think my other question, I have to scroll back and get that. Uh, it was Julie's question. On Eskow, how do I erase the background on an image from Google? Uh, and I'm going to show that. I had to do it earlier today, so I'm going to show you how to do that, Julie, as soon as we get through with the project. We're going to move over to Eskow. I try to save Eskow for last because not everybody is using Eskow. They don't, um, they're still learning design space, so they don't want to get into that yet. So I try to keep that to the end so that they don't have to watch the entire video or stay the entire time to get their stuff taken care of before we get into it. Right, you have to cancel it like I did there, yeah. And just hit make it again. I bogged it down. Okay, this is tonight's project. It is public. It is for everybody. If you, um, I didn't put the link down below because I forgot I ran out of time. I did post it with the video in the groups, but it is design number 112-154-717. So you can just come to Design Space, open up any project, and just change those numbers on the end, and it will open up for you. Escal is not the same as Design Space. It's similar. They're, they're, they have a lot of things that are alike. They're just called different stuff things like um, instead of weld it's join so I mean there there are just different types of things different terminology and it has more function than design space of course it doesn't you can type text on a curve but it isn't the same kind of curve that we get in design space which we're going to cover tonight also so this is my test crash dummy and this is coming this file will be for patrons only and it will be in the exclusive file when I get through tweaking it. I got I got it too thick. I made this for a king size candy bar because I'm doing one for both. One is going to be for a regular size, one's going to be for a king size. And they will be in the same exact file. Um, but I'm not through tweaking it. I ran out of time. But this one when you pull the tab at the top and I pulled it off, then the slide comes out the bottom. And don't pay attention, this is my crash dummy. I have to tell where my, I haven't even marked this one yet to tell how low I can go with the sentiment. Um, but when you pull the candy bar up, the sentiment pops out down at the bottom. And then when you push it back in, it of course goes back in. So that's in the works, that's coming guys. I wanted to have it for you tonight but things happened 
so it's coming um it's very i'm going to show i do a video tutorial on putting that one together and it will be shown there with the file remember that it's going to be on the exclusives tab for patrons who subscribe five dollars or more if you're not a patreon supporter consider supporting two dollars and under gets you hundreds of files uh five dollars and up gets you all the files so this is tonight's tutorial and when you pull this one it just slides out and this is my test on this one and i it was too short so i went in and changed the file and i made it a little bit longer so this one you just when you pull it out and then when you push it back down the ribbon goes back down with it very cute very easy um, I embellished this one with the new stamp set from Stampin' Up. Amanda, who is one of our patrons, is a Stampin' Up rep, um, and you can get her link from me or from her. If she's here, she can post it. If not, you can, I will post it in the groups for you. But I used the Making Christmas Bright stamp and punch for that, and then they have the, these little miniature bows are on clearance for like two bucks, I think. I, I can't even remember what I paid for them. But you get a ton of bows for that. Great for little packages and Christmas. But this is for a regular size candy bar. And all you're going to do is cut it. It's just one piece. That's all there is. One little bitty piece. And then you're going to place glue down this tab. And just fold all your folds valley folds that's all there is put glue on that tab and press it together just drop my scraper but that's basically all you're going to do for that then you're going to put just a little bit of glue right here on this bottom and you can put that and just squish it down. Now I have a crimper. If you don't have a crimper, it's not a big deal. You can even put this down on a um, scoring board and score a couple of lines in it. But I just like to use my crimper and put a little crimp in the end like that. So you can do that if you have a crimper that's going to squish that glue. Then you're going to take your ribbon. And you're just going to push the ribbon cut that a little bit better. It's got like a fork on the end of it instead of a sliver. You're just going to take your ribbon and thread it through the hole. And you can use any ribbon. You can use the wide ribbon as you saw used on the other. And then I'm just going to pull it until it's even. I know I'm probably out of camera. This piece of ribbon, and it's probably long, is 12, let's see. Yeah, it's really long. 24 should be good, 24 inch. But once you have it with your thread, or your ribbon, just like that, front to back, you're going to take your candy bar, and with your front facing you, whatever side you decorate, you're going to push that candy bar in. And mine, you want to make sure that the ribbon distributes evenly. I think I had my finger on it. You just want to push that ribbon down so that it's pulling through on both sides. Then you're just going to tie a bow. and you can cut panels for the front of these uh, Patricia Shepard asked me to make this file for her um, so that's who inspired it it's been around it was an old stampin up file if i'm not mistaken don't quote me on that i could be wrong it could be a split coast stampers 
but I just remembered how to do it from years ago. But then all you do is just pull your ribbon up and it's going to slide the bar out. And that one is much better with the extra height on it. And then you just push it back in. And you can decorate this for any occasion, for a birthday, for Christmas, for Halloween, anything. It's just really quick. You can use almost a scrap for it. I believe that the dimensions on that piece of paper were six by six and a half. So, I mean, if you've got a shorter candy bar, you can take certainly take that down to a six by six because that's what I had this one at. But the candy bar sticks out just a little bit, and then when you pull it, it kind of leaves the package. Very super, very easy to make. Hi, Joanne. Glad you could join us. Yeah, I mean, you saw how quick that went together. That, I mean, cutting time, putting it together, everything, probably, what, five minutes? You can stamp these, and instead of having to glue embellishments and stuff on there, stamp it before you, um, before you fold it and glue it. Go ahead and stamp something on it. While it's all flat, nice and flat, you're ready to go. Just do yourself a little assembly line. But it's really cute. Cute and simple. Make sure that you put your candy bar into the front so that you can see that when they pull it out. Yeah, you can use designer paper, Sue, and then uh, stamp across that as well. Very cute, very easy. Anybody have any questions on how that goes together? Get my. There we go. All right. Yeah, it makes cool little gifts for co workers, Stacy. Um, say you're doing a birthday party. How, how good is that? Because you can individualize the candy bars and treats for the, the kids depending on what they can or can't have. So, I mean, something super simple. You can customize this like the chip bags, you know, put anything on there, print your paper. The crimper at Amazon is where I got mine. That may not be the direct link, but there's a link to Amazon for you. And, um, I don't even know. Let's see. Let's go over to Amazon and see if they've got one. If they do, I'll just grab you the direct link. It will. A dollar bill? It should because a dollar bill is what? Six by two point. I know it's six inches long. And a candy bar is six inches long. Yeah, they want a ton for this one at um, Amazon, guys. Um, it is on Prime. For thirty nine dollars, that's a direct link. It's called the Yukita Corrugated Paper Crimper. Be careful when you buy these because some of them crimp differently. But this is the one that I just used. That link right there is the one I used. Hey, Deborah. Yeah, they're pricey, but if you do a lot of birthday parties or uh, party favors, it's a great thing to have. It's quick, it's easy. Like you, like I said, it helped me squish that glue in there and glue that together. It's there. So, and you can also you could even make this longer and eliminate the holes, and just do a whole wrapper and close both ends up. That way they have to open it up, use a thinner paper instead of a cardstock. 
and you can do your own candy bar wrapper with it. The chip bag, you have to print the PDF to do it because you have to make it so large it won't work with print and cut. So that's why we have that in a PDF. But the candy bar, six by six, that will fit. Well, let's see, we can even go six by, we would need to add a half inch at least to the top of it. So it would be six and a half by six and a half that fits in the print and cut area. So you can print and cut and print both ends and make your own candy bar packages. Quick and easy, they'll go together in minutes. Um, Marissa, yes, there is a video. I did it for, it was on Chat Around the Mat in July for the 4th of July. It was either the last one in June or the first one in July. I think it was the last one in June. And it showed how, how to do the chip bag. And I may do that one again on a tutorial video by itself. Fisker's on eBay for $18.77. Good, 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 good catch, Kathy. Do they have quantity or is it just one? Let's switch over here to Design Space. Or yeah, that's not what I want to do. There we go. I just want to close that out. So there is your wrapper. And all you have to do, guys, is um, unlock this. You can contour out the holes. Unlock this if you want to do it end to end and make this in six and a half as well. Thank you, Sue. There, there is the link to the chip bag. Marissa, Sue posted it there. Hey, Lucy. Okay, does that answer everybody's design space questions? And even if you don't have Escal, guys, you may want to stick around and see some of the cool things that it can do. Um, and I will pick a winner here. Let me see. Julie Blomped uh, is going to be the winner for Winner Winner Chicken Dinner this week. Uh, so, Julie, if you are a patron, I have your um, address. No need to do nothing. If you are not a patron, I think you are a patron, aren't you? Um, there's so many names I forget. Um, if not, just message me your address and I will get a gift out to you. Yay! Patreon too, yes! Okay, I'll get you a gift out, Julie. And if uh, Leanna's watching, Leanna, I sent yours today. I apologize it took so long. It totally slipped my mind. Um, but I did get it out to you today. You have a package coming from Cricut. From last week's Winter Winter Chicken Dinner. All right. So I am just going to minimize design space, guys, because I'm going to show you how to, to bring your image in. Um, let's go ahead and do this one first. Where did my girl go? Let me pull her over here where I can keep track of her. Uh, someone asked me how you could take this right here and bring in and change the color of just the tutu, how to do that. And I just did it for her, and I thought I would use this as an example on how I did that. And you can see it has a white background, but it I believe it's a PNG, but we're going to check it out and see. Um, let me close that out, and hopefully I can find it and bring it in here. And choose an image, and I am going to go 
to, there she is, and I'm going to open it. All I, then that's all I did is I clicked on trace and I hit open, okay? And I like to update the preview so I can see it, and that's what I'm seeing. And I really don't want that. I just want the silhouette. So I'm going to take it down to two colors. And if you, this is how many layers there are. Oop, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do stay on color layers. And this is one, two layers right here. Same thing, two layers. The more you go up, the more layers you're going to get. And I'm just going to click on it and say, okay. It's all I have to do. She comes in extremely huge because it was a PNG, I believe. And I'm going to come over here and make this 12 inches. Let's make this 12 inches. The height. There we go. So now I have my ballerina. I have the outline. But I want just the tutu, and I want to change the color of that. The next thing you're going to do on something like this that is a silhouette is copy it. And I'm just going to paste and keep one to the side. Then I am going to take the eraser. Somebody was asking about how to get rid of a background. This is one way, but it's going to depend on your image. And that was Julie. Um, Julie, if you can give me a link to the image, we'll bring that one in next and see how we do that. But then I'm, I've got my eraser and I'm going to size it. I'm going to make it kind of big because I don't want to be here all day erasing. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to erase a ton of stuff. And I'm just going to bump that up right there. I'm going to make it smaller for that one. And then I'm going to come in here. Just like that. And I'm going to make my eraser smaller. So I want to come in here and get rid of that rough edge. And you have a square up there too for things that are not rounded. Just going to come in here. Just going to bounce it in just to give it a little bit of a curve to where it looks cohesive with the rest of it. And then I'm going to go back to my selection tool over here on the left. I'm going to select this. And I got you see how that square is down there? Remember when you bring stuff in Design Space and it says it's so big but it won't let me size? There's something stuck down here, guys. I missed a piece. See it right there? And that's what will happen. Make sure you clean your image up good. So now let's go back to select. And now when I select it, you see how my box is right there around it? That tells me I cleaned everything up except that portion. Then I'm going to come over here to the palette on the right. I'm going to select it. And I am going to make it, let's just make it ballerina pink. How about that? And say OK. And now you notice the second color. This is just a cut line color. And if you notice, I left that black. When I overlay it, you can't see it. But when I put the mouse over, it turns red. If you want to be able to see where your cut line is, you can change that color of the cut line. Let me bring her over here. I'm going to arrange by right clicking and send it to the back. And you see how that you can see that pink outline on that black? That's just going to help you. I generally just leave mine black, but that's how you can do that. Now, I took it a step further. I'm reading, guys. Oh, uh, let's see. It was one of those splash watercolor pictures with splatters of color. The black ground was not white. Okay, I'll see if I can find an image that I can use. I have Escal 5, Marissa. Yes, you need to upgrade. It, it's changed a lot. Uh, if you have Escal 4, you can just pay for the upgrade. If you have something lower than Escal 4, you, they're going to make you buy it again. 
but let's just click on this and I'm going to select it all and with this one I always get that ruler in SGAL remember you have to select everything or it won't pick it up it's not like just touching it with design space you have to completely select it all I'm going to right click go to appearance and I'm going to add a shadow layer and then you can decide how why do you want that shadow layer if you want it to be a blackout shadow layer um, any of that you can do that here and just say you can pick your color if you want to change it to a color say okay um, that's a little big I'm going to take that back down and say okay there and now I have my separated tutu I have the girl and then I have um, the shadow layer but if just in case you never know, add a shadow layer to your tutu as well. You, you might need it for whatever reason. I'm just going to make it green so we can see it. So now you've got a shadow layer just for this. You have a shadow layer just for her, and then you have it separated. You will probably want to line it up and center it and make it pretty. Um, however you want to do that. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to do it here, but you're going to line it up. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to right click and I'm going to group it. Okay. Everything is now grouped. I am going to hold my shift key. I'm going to select it so that it stays proportioned and I'm going to shrink it down. Whatever size you have it here, that's the size it's going into design space as. Okay. So now let's hit file at the top and export and I'm just going to title this ballerina I'm going to say three just because I don't know if I've got more on here and I'm saving it to my desktop and it will save as an SVG I'm going to hit save and I will get this pop-up that's and all I've got to do is hit OK you don't have to do anything be, uh, with the registration marks and things like that because if you're doing print then cut Design Space has its own. Hi, Ivy. So now we've got, let's go back to Design Space and let's hit Upload, Upload. And I'm going to browse, I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to grab my ballerina and choose it. I'm going to name it, tag it, and save. Then I'm going to select it and insert it. And now you see she comes in grouped because I grouped her in SCAL. If I don't group her in SCAL, she's not going to be grouped here. She is the same size, 4.584 by 7236. Well, if I can find it. Oh, I have to select her. That would help. 4584237. It's off, I mean, minutely, very minutely. So, I mean, you're probably good to go with anything that you're doing in here. Yeah. I mean, I can change that. It's not going to change. I'm not going to change anything. So you have your four layers. You can ungroup that, and now you can cut that anyway. And if by chance you wanted to. I did do this for her. I did slice it out. Um, and this file, guys, is uploaded in the SVG files on the site, so you can get it. Um, because I did take that other one a step further for her, and I sliced this out, and all this was clean. So she had the full body, the split body. That way she could do it this way and all you have to do to do that oops I'm gonna stay there let me ungroup this and it's called a knockout okay so we're this is my original size and this is my design I'm just going to line that up and I just get it close and then I use the arrow keys over here to bring it down and line everything up and then I'm going to select 
so you have to get all of it. Select her. I'm going to come up here to the effects tool and I'm going to do a knockout. And I do not want any gap on this. I want it to, if I were putting, putting this as iron on on a shirt, this particular one, I would not want that gap. And I'll show you what that does. And I'm just going to say OK. And now yeah, I would clean this up, but you have your knockout. It's the same as slicing. And what I mean by gap, let me show you guys that. Effects, knockout, oops, that's lattice, don't want that. Effects, knockout, do a small gap and say OK. And you notice that there is now that small gap between the tutu and the girl. So that's how you do that. That was one of the questions that I said I would cover um, tonight. So, and basically all knockouts are going to be that way. Uh, as far as an image um, to clean up the background of, let's go. Let's just say. Paint splatter. Maybe I can get something there. I don't know if this one will work, but we'll try it. I'm going to download that image and then let's come over to Escal. What did that download as? I didn't even look. YFZ. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go to Trace, choose an image, and that went into my downloads. There it is at the top, and I'm going to open it. And we're going to, there are several colors in here, so I'm going to give this at least 10 or 12 layers, maybe more. I don't know how many I gave it because it's not going to stop. There we go, 18 layers. That's, that's quite a bit. Let's, let's take that down to 10. And here we have, we brought it in to Escal. Let's make this smaller so we can look at it. And the way that you would clean this up, this really isn't a good image to do this with. You want to go to right click and you can, I would say if you had like three or four layers, to me it's, this is better than Inkscape, Patricia. It's easier to learn. Um, Inkscape is like a stripped down version of, um, well, not stripped down. This is a stripped down version and made simpler um, than Inkscape is. I think you can do more in Inkscape. I think you have more control, but Inkscape confuses me. Yeah, it's much easier to learn. Um, but you can select this image, right click, and you can ungroup it, and then you can remove that black layer, like so, but then you're going to have all these other layers. You see what's happening? I'm just peeling the layers back, but I'm losing detail. So the best thing to do, let's make sure that that is grouped again. Yes. On this, this is a really tough image. I probably should have picked something else. Um, you can come up to your path. Um, object. Object. And break apart. And then you can get those pieces that you want out of there. And get rid of the rest. You see how I've got this? But you will have to do that for each piece that you need. To do it that way and this is a really difficult image it really is um, to do that with but you can see how I can remove this piece of the background here because it was completely separated did that answer your question Julie
on how to do that. Let me see if I can find another image that won't be so difficult. Um, anybody think of anything? An image? I'm just drawing a blank. My, my mind is fritzed out today between Facebook not letting links through and just all sorts of things. <laughs> my site, all of my SVGs are not reading. So if you're a Patreon and you're trying to get some SVGs, some of them are there, some of them are not. We're working on it. Um, let's, see. let's do a cat. Oh, there's Katie Catherine. And she has some cool free SVGs every day. As a matter of fact, Sue posted one to me today and I haven't gotten it yet. I need to go get that. Mm, this one probably be the easiest to show. Was yours clip art, Julie, or was it a photo? Because photos are actually easier to do in What is the name of that app? Emma, Emma Engine? I'm an engine, something like that. They're going to be easier to do there. It was a watercolor. You told me that. See, I told you I can't think today. Let's get a flower watercolor. Something like this, Julie, and you want to remove that background, maybe? Yeah, that's it, Ivy. watercolor thing. I'm just trying to find one that might work easily. Without the actual image, I don't really know what I'm looking to do. We'll tr this one's going to be the same as that last one. It's going to be really tough to clean this up, but you can... Okay. Um, on something like this, if I were going to do this on Escal, I would probably use the eraser. Splatter art. anything popping out you can just paste it in chat here i think you'll just copy your link at the top and paste it into chat like so the bird This one? I didn't see a bird. This one. Okay. All right. Let me download that. What is that? One. Okay. Let's bring it in and trace it. Choose an image. And my downloads, there it is right there. And again, I've got several colors and it's got that white background. And I'm just going to say, okay, I'm not going to mess with that a whole lot. But you see that it removed all of that. And all you would do here is select that because it autom automatically removes the white. That's the whole thing with this kind. It takes all the white out. So, I mean, that one was just that simple. I mean, you could add more colors, but you're talking about a ton of layers here. 
Um, as you can see over here, there are 10 layers. But I mean, you can take out and add as many of the layers as you want. Now, if you're going to be putting this into design space, it's easier to clean up here than it is in design space because you would be clicking all day trying to get around all these little spots. Um, yeah, okay. Um, all you're going to do is remove that background. You'll break it apart and you'll remove that background or use the eraser tool. So that's the way you're going to do that. And your break apart is up here in object. And there's nothing to break apart here because I ungrouped it. It's already broken apart in different layers. And you can take this into design space. You can weld some of these layers together and get rid of some of them. But if you really want that color, I wouldn't do anything except at this point. Um, oops. I want to keep him. Um, go to File and Export. This is something that I would actually use like a printable HTV or I would do a print and cut with it. Okay. So I'm going to, as you notice, I, I don't think I grouped that, but that's okay. Um, it's a parrot. I'm going to put it on my desktop and save. Say OK. I'm going to bring up Design Space. Get a new, replace, upload, upload, browse. There's my parrot. I'm going to choose it. And it's a little slow loading. That is a lot, That's a ton of layers. And I'm just going to say, just you're going to name and tag, of course, save it. Tons of layers. Hey, Catherine. Yeah, if you don't have a background on them, they're easy. Or if you can select a white background, that's going to make it easier because Escal is going to take that white background and it's going to go away. And see, now I have all those layers here in Design Space. And if I were to select it all or leave it like that, I could weld it and have one single layer. Or I could leave it like that and do a print and cut. But see, if you weld it, that's what you get. And you can weld strategic layers together as well in Design Space and still keep some of your detail. But yeah, that's something that I would select all and flatten. And then I would have that for my print and cut. Because those are very tedious. And again, guys, I'm learning this with you, and we're learning by trial and error. So there are tips and tricks out there that we haven't learned yet. Yeah, if you want to do a water slide with the tumbler on there, um, that will work because you can do this on a white background if you wanted to. The white water slide, I have both. I have the clear and the white. But to me, that's abstract, that's flatter, and I would do it just like it sits. To me, that would look cool. But it's all in what look you're going for. So just go in, and um, the best thing to do is play and check all those buttons and see what they're going to do. Oh, you're welcome. So let's do some text and go over some of those tools, guys. Um, of course, when it opens, you're going to get this. Right now, I'm just going to select an oval out of here, and then I'm going to close it because I'm going to use that oval here in a minute. And then here we have our text tool. I've been doing a ton of collegiate cups here in the last couple of weeks, and I've still got some to do. I got some more orders. So, um, 
in your text tool you have if you hold it down with your uh, mouse you're going to see that you have the type tool which is your normal typing you have vertical you have type on a path and type on an arch and I use the vertical tool um, in one of mine today uh, this week and I'm just I just clicked on that and then I clicked on the canvas here and then I'm going to go and choose a font and I'm gonna go down here and probably pick Clemson so now I have Clemson in there and it's typed vertically for me and, but I want to take it a step further and I am going to do an ap um, appearance and add a shadow layer and I just want a thin one not a not anything major and say okay now I have this here this is I just needed an outline so from here I can do a break apart and do single letters you can do several things but I want to slice the front out of the back because I want the purple of my cup to show through and I just want a white outline so I'm just going to come up here and I want the back minus the front and that's because my shadow is in the back and I slice that and now I just have that outline let me make that a color so you guys can see it and there you go and you can see the grid behind those so that just tells me it's just a letter outline okay so that's one of the tips and tricks that you can use with the text tool without having to know a, a lot about um, SCAL so let me select that and I'm just gonna get rid of that I'm going to go back to the text tool and I am going to go to uh, the regular tool the type tool at the top and then I am going to type in Southern Miss. Oops, I missed an N, didn't I? And then I'm going to type another line and I'm going to put Golden Eagles. And you, you may have tons of different teams, um, but I'm just going to show you some tips and tricks on working with text because a lot of people are doing a lot of text art. Now I have my oval here and of course I would bring in the eagle at this point but and it, it will clean it up for me and I'll have it I'm just going to use this oval as a representative of that eagle in the oval so I'm just going to stretch that out to the size that I want it a good working size and I'm going to you notice I type these in two different lines I wanted them in two different lines so I've got one at the top one at the bottom I'm going to select everything I am going to go up to object align and center horizontally that way everything is centered and I can see it there and I made it large so that I can play with it and look at it I want okay this one is seven point three six three inches wide I want this one to be the same I'm just going to hold my shift key because I want to keep it proportioned and I'm just going to drag it out till I have that line on both sides and now that should be about the same the height may be just a smidge different but it won't really matter once you start playing with it okay so the next thing I'm just checking if I get quiet guys I'm just reading chat to make sure that I don't miss anything so now let's go and play with this just a little bit let's go up to effects and I'm gonna skip three well I'll just do some of them and we'll see what they do 3d rotate and what this does is it just kind of rotates your 
text, okay? So if you wanted it to run in a line like that for whatever reason, you could do it if you wanted to flip it up backwards or whatever. That's what this does. It will do a ton of other things, but we're not going to get into those right now um, because it's going to require doing some other stuff um, and, and get me getting some images that that would really work with. So I'm just going to hit cancel, but that shows you what that effect does. Barrel distortion. When you hit that and you change the pre threshold, you can see how it kind of rolls that. You see how that looks really different there? Let's go up to about 27. 28. Really? I don't know if I'm lagging or if it... There we go. See how it's starting to distort and barrel roll that? That's what that does. Then your effects. We have the bridge warp. And this is the one that I used to make that cup that I did. And I am going to start with this top. And if you'll notice that this bottom line is arched and the top one is straight across, I am going to work with the bottom. I'm going to push the bottom up on this one. But then I am going to scale the height and make the height taller. And then I'm just going to keep playing with this until I get it on the arch that I want. And that's looking pretty good there. Might have to scale it in some. But you can play with these and get them to conform. Kind of like that. So I'm going to say OK. And now I can bring this down. I probably should have done it just a tiny bit more on there. But you can see what that is doing. It's giving it that curve. Let's go back to effects, bridge warp. And let's see, oops, I'm going to redo that. Let's get that offset a little bit more. There we go. And now it looks like it's riding around that oval. You do the same thing with the bottom, except you just, you're just going to reverse it. Um, Let's go to the bridge warp, and we're going to put that at a zero, and we're going to do the top. And I know I don't have these even, but you, you would even them up. Take your time and get it like you want it. Get them exactly even. And then you have your logo here in the middle. Does everybody get the bridge warp? Anybody have any questions about the bridge warp? Okay, let's go to bulge and see what it does. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, let's see. It's kind of the same, but you've, but it, well, it's not really. You can, oh, I'm on the wrong one. Where's my bottom curve? There it is. Does that look familiar to anybody? What if we, let me get my select tool. I always forget that. Get rid of this. And there's just the word that I put in there. Let's go to the library and get a shape. I'm going to hold the shift key and stretch that. Let's get some text. Of course, I would probably use... Yep. 
Let's make that a different color so that we can see it. I think this will work. I don't know. I'm going to try it. Like I said, we're learning this together. And bring that down. Let's just select it all. Object, align, centers. And I'm going to make that taller, of course, a little bit bigger. Doesn't really have to be. Then I'm going to go to effects and let's do that bulge and see. Got that one in. Oh, that's cool. I like how it's doing that. -y. Let's undo. Let me cancel that and go back to the bulge. I want to see if we can fill this shape with that by starting with the bulge part, bringing it down. Of course, we could slice some of that out and then maybe go to the nodes, ungroup it and go to the nodes. Okay, Judy, hurry back. Um, now I've got this ungrouped. Maybe I can bring that in. I should have used a different font is what I should have used. One just had straight letters without all these serifs on it. Um, let's go to the... Thing. No, that's not the right one. Nodes tool, they're right there. Third one down. Then I can kind of stretch and conform this into the space and fill it in. This will take some work, but you can do it. You see how I'm filling the shape of that heart by moving the nodes around? And you're going to have to do that for each letter. but we can get it to fill those shapes. I haven't played with this yet, guys. This is gonna take practice and there may be some shortcuts that we don't know yet, but you can play with these and you see that how you can distort and change this. Another font would be much better. Oh, I like that. Let me undo that though. Picked up one of those. I forgot what those are called. Does anybody know the one with the round dot? Handle, uh, is it a handle that makes it curve like that? I think that there is right here. Depends on which one of these you select, whether it's sharp, rounded. Seeing if it will give me a pop-up. It doesn't. I'll have to research and find out what those are called. But there are just tons of things that we can do with just the font uh, tools. Next um, tutorial that we do, I am going to go in and we're going to work more with uh, shapes. And because we can all do the add text and things like that to just about any project. So I want to learn more about working with some of the shapes and changing those. Um, but you can still use your effects with shapes too. Like this heart, for instance, we can do lattice. And you can change how much you want this lattice to be. So if you were doing a card and you wanted a lattice heart in it for whatever reason, you can say OK and change that. And of course, you'll want to put in a, a shadow layer and slice it so that these are held together. 
So you're going to need a border. Handles. That's what I thought it was, and I was drawing a blank, the handles. But when you select those nodes and you cl click on that, these handles up here, I guess, show how sharp that your it's going to be when you do it. It's going to create a different shape when you're using them. Let's click on that one. Maybe, yeah, see all the nodes showing up here? And if I'm not mistaken, somebody correct me, but I think the nodes, each one of these is where it tells your blade to change position and go in another direction. That's what these do. Each one of these sends a message to your cutter and says, okay, we're done with that direction. You've gone to the next one. Now change direction. I think that that's what they, the purpose of nodes are. Yes, uh, Gerald, uh, it is a game changer um, because we can do so much. Uh, like I said, I've been playing around a little bit. I don't know it all. I'm, I'm learning with you guys because there's not a whole lot of tutorials out there. Um, so we'll learn and then we'll make our mistakes together. But um, I'm getting a little bit better with it and, and the things that you can do, um, like I showed last week, you can take ovals and you can create the abstract pumpkins and things like that and put the sayings on it that you see um, all over the internet from loves and everybody else hungry that they all have them. Now I'm just going to hold the shift key and drag that and that would be the center of my pumpkin and I'm just going to um, keep repeating that and slicing which is the front minus the back tools which are not going to be lit up here but you can create some really awesome projects. Let me see if I can pull mine up here. And show you guys. Um, but this was created in Escal. I used my text tool, I picked fonts, um, and I used the oval, and I just did some slicing. And then I duplicated, made this one a little bit smaller, and I welded some shapes together to give me a stem and vines. And you can find some of that in Escal, I don't know if you guys have been looking, but you see the flourish? That's where my leaves and stuff came from on there. And all I did was weld those together. Or actually, it's not called weld in here. It's called um, join. Union. It's called union. So if I had this one and this one, and I just wanted to... I'm going to change it up just a little bit. Kind of like that. Then I would select both of these and go to Path, Union, and now it's one piece. So it's the same as well. But you can create a ton of that, and it's easier to start with some of those ab abstract types and work with those like the pumpkin than it is to um, come in here and try, try to create a fish or a bird from scratch. I mean, you can do it by playing with the nodes and skewing, um, and you can get shapes and switch back and forth. But you can you can create several shapes and then bring those shapes together. So that's kind of looking like a cornucopia, <laughs> a shark's tooth, 
I mean, there are several things you can do, but you just have to take those shapes and you have to play with them and get used to it. And that's how I've been teaching myself. And if there's things that I want to do, I see done uh, frames. They already have a couple of, I think Scrappy Do has uh, a couple of them on the object on a path. As you know, I, I tried that last week and mine wouldn't work. I did not have time to figure out what step I was missing. It worked and then it wouldn't work and then it worked and then it wouldn't work. So I don't know why I just ran out of time to research. So I wasn't able to get in there. But there are tons of things you can do and that the, these tools work. You just have to get in there just like you did with Design Space before you knew it well and you had to play with it. It's going to be the same thing. You're going to have to go in and just take some time and play with those shapes. And every time I learn a tip or a trick, I will try to share it and show you guys. But um, this is um, nesting. What did that do? I can't remember what that did. I knew it froze me up and I didn't want to try it again. I think it put it all together. The upgrades, the difference between three to five, I did not have three. I had four. And before that, I had make the cut. But from three to five, I don't know, but let's see. I know that they had listed something. Let's see. Nope. I knew I would pull up the wrong sites. Let's craft edge. Okay. Here's craft edge. I'm trying to see. I know they had it on here. Jamie, do you remember where they told us the difference? Now, they do have some tutorials, written tutorials, guys, here that you can pull up and go through these steps. It will tell you what each one are, but there aren't any, um, like, weld versus union. There are, there, they do have a weld in there, and then they have the union, which union is what I used. Um, but it tells you what the differences are, okay, so that you can see those. And it will tell you what to do and how to get there step by step. But if you want the video versions, they charge $75 for those. And, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'll take my time and learn it slowly, but I'm not going to do that. I want to know. I thought there was a link at one point on here that told what the upgrades were. They had a small video on it. Please excuse me, guys. I'll be right back. I had a delivery and I was, I forgot about it. My apologies, guys. Okay. Um, I know most of them were li listed there. I don't. Let's see. If we click on it like we're going to buy it. Okay. 
Maybe you're right. Sure cuts a lot. That window's awfully small, isn't it? New effects are added. Bolt, warp, drop shadow, the QR code, symmetrical, mirror, um, nesting, um, the adding matte templates, guidelines, um, additional file formats including PES, PEC, HUS, JEF, SEW, and VIP. I have no clue what those are, so I would have to look that up. Um, additional text justification and sizing. Uh, you can convert your stroke to a path. Um, the new trace image options for the background removal and mask editing. Uh, where did Julie go? Julie, that's what you need to look for right there. Trace image options for background removal. We answered your question. <laughs> it's there. And then in uh, options to control cut order, we can't do that with our Cricut, so you don't need Pro. You can't send it straight to the machine for cutting. And um, the cut presets into layers. So those are in only, okay, Jamie. Okay, that's only in the uh, Pro version. which we don't really, I don't think, need anyway. Yeah, the QR code thing is cool too, Julie. But that, there it is. There's an option for background removal and mask editing. So what I would suggest, Julie, on that one is going over to the, the tutorials on Craft Edge site. And I would not purchase, I would go to the link that Sue posted above from dreaming um svg tools and dreaming tree because i think it's a little bit less over there than it is here i don't know about 10 bucks and you get the 6.99 um dreaming tree gift card this is the program that dreaming tree uses to create their files it's escal um i think they might use some inkscape too but i think they mainly use escal um when you go into five, the written tutorials, come down here to, where's Trace? Yeah, that's one of the differences from SCAL 3. Uh, 2 and 3, I think you could send to your cutters but they can't do that anymore to the crickets you can send to other cutters but not your cricket you have the classes debbie cool yeah that would help we're looking to see how to remove a background using the trace function that that's our main question for the night. That was the, the one. We we just wanted to go over some of the tools and the text and see what they would do. Um, this is the one I want to learn to use is the draw tool. That's the one that I'm interested in. And this is my other one. I've run into this a lot sometimes, and, but even I did this and I still couldn't get it to show. And that may be why I may have had an open path. But so if you want a, the, something to fill in and it's looking like it's not filled in, that's where you're going to go. Take it off of that. Change your opacity. But there are just tons of tools in here, guys. Um, and like I said, go in and play with it. There are the paid for classes, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to research and find it out and 
play with it and learn it on my own. You have a purchase file that is a strawberry shortcake PNG. Yes, you can do that in here um, and turn it into an SVG, Karen. Um, let me get. I'm just going to pick one. It may not be the one you have, but I'm just going to show you. Um, let's say you had this one. And I'm going to download the image. Clip Arts 8. And I'm going to hit Trace. Choose an image. And I'm going to go to Recents. Clip Arts 8. And I'm going to open it. And you can see that it brings her up here. Um, and you can choose how many layers you need. This is set in default. You can change it per thing. I usually try to keep mine five or less, but this has a ton of color in it. So I'm just going to leave it like it is and say, okay. And you can see right there, that's all the white has been removed. Let's go to the size and bring this up to 10. There we go. So we can see here on the screen. So now you have all these layers. You can ungroup it. And then when you take this into design space, you're going to have all of these different layers that you can layer up, you can slice apart, and do all of whatever it is you need to do with them. How do you remove the red around the PNG? You have a red background. That sounds like a um, that sounds like a screenshot or something. A JPEG, not a PNG. Do you mean that it has sometimes there's like a red line? And that red line is just a cut line. It's not going to be red. I mean, I can change. Let me ungroup these. Like this one here. Well, did I ungroup? Ungroup. Yeah. Right now that the stroke color or the cut line is pink. But I can make it green. And then I have a green outline around her. I don't know if you guys can see that on that screen. Okay, it's a screenshot of a file as a silhouette file. Yeah, you can bring it in here and clean it up and get rid of that red. Um, but uh, you'll have to use Escal to clean it up for your personal use because you can't upload silhouette files into design space they have their own extension just like design space has their own extensions yeah um you could do that or just start with a new fresh image uh, i don't know you can send the image to me and I'll see if there's something I can do with it and tell you the steps. Yeah, they're not compatible. The only way that you can use a silhouette is if it had an SVG purchase and you had to purchase the, like Jamie said, the business edition, then you could export it as an SVG. That's the only way you can do it. Okay, then you can export it as an SVG if that file has the capability. Okay. All right, guys. I thank you for joining me tonight, and we'll pick up where we left off. We'll keep learning um, as we learn new tips and tricks. We'll share those in the groups and um, keep doing 
Convert Studio to SVG. Yeah, there are several of those, Maria. The um, Pick SVG does, and somebody else said another one the other day. And I thought that one was pretty neat. Let me see if I can find that one. Did I save it? No craft edge. I guess I didn't save it. I thought I did. It was in the groups. Um, it was different from Pick SVG. It was totally different. Okay, Marissa, I thank all of you guys for joining me, and I will see you next uh, Monday. I will try to get this uh, exclusive file out for the candy bar slide, the uh, big, bigger one where the pop-out's at the bottom. I will try to get that out this week to you guys. Um, so you have a great night, and I'll see you on the next um, live. Thanks to all my patrons and to my moderators. I appreciate you all. That's it, Jamie, SVG Creator.